So we're back and um, we are going to make shoes for this doll. Now I will tell you that um, uh, I had nothing to do with the design of these shoes and the, ma the making. This is all your, your plan, right, Jose? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all my plan. So, so if you have uh, questions or complaints, go call to me. call call him. <laughs> yeah, he's listed in the phone book. So, um, uh, one of the reasons we decided to do the shoes is because we have the bias pieces, which cut up a lot of fabric and or use up a lot of fabric. So, she needed shoes, and we thought it would be a good idea to. Uh, use up that fabric because you need to do shoes on the bias. So teach us your talent, Jose. So oh, what do you? That's not sweat. Okay. Okay. Me... okay. We're going to use two pieces of cardstock glued together, which which I already did. And which, that's... Is, which is in your kit. It's in it's in the kit. Okay. okay. And or, then... or if you if you or not the kit, but if you bought the the uh, group of fabric, but if. You're doing this on your own. You've got to find some cardstock. Right. And then you're going to glue the uh, silk file on it. On the brown side, you are going to draw two shoe soles, one facing the, this way and the other one facing down. Why? Because you need to have a pair. If you go like this on both, then you're going to have one shape. You need yeah, the you both need, shapes. Yeah, it's a different shape. Okay. Yeah, you, but if your doll has two left feet, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> happens <laughs> yeah and then separately you need to do the same thing for, um, for for again this is going to be the bottom sole and you need to mm -hmm. uh -huh, the outer sole and you need two on the opposite at the same way like so and then like so okay, okay so did you you used a, a white pencil for that I used a white pencil just so that it's uh, visible for this video they, they can use whatever they have as long as they yeah. are able to see that it. shows with the video thank okay you. everybody thanks you for that we're going to use the peach um, silk and if the, you're doing the blue use the blue or um, we're what? going to use the lightweight uh, acro silk and the tarlatan okay all right so, first step, tarlatan at the bottom, <clears throat> light silk, we're going to do this all at once. Okay, you're going to cut this all at one time. Excuse me, I'm sorry, no, forget the tarlatan now, I'm sorry, it's the uh, lightweight silk and then your blue or your peach, okay? And by doing a fold over, you're going to get the two, the right and the left. Mm -hmm by doing that that way. Right? The pattern, yes. The pattern is going to be laid on, uh, on a bias. It must be on the bias. It must be on the bias for you, easier. Um, clumsy shoes. Okay, once this is in place, Michael is always taking my scissors. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> it's a, it's a, uh, an ongoing battle here with everybody's scissors. All right, ladies. And gentlemen. And gentlemen. I think I should explain something before uh, I do this, okay? So I'm going to take this off because they have a different doll that they're going to be working on, right? Yeah. So the feed sizes, it's going to change. So... What you do here now is grab this pattern, around. wrap it around the feet, and make sure that gives you plenty of room. Here I have like half an inch uh, excess on the front, and in the back it's, um, let's say it's like a quarter of an inch. Uh, uh, an eighth, an eighth of an inch. Okay, so whatever your uh, doll's feet so size. don't you think this is a quarter of an inch, not a half an inch? Yes, Qu quarter Did of I an say inch. half an inch? No. It's quarter of an inch. A quarter, a and quarter, an, and a quarter. And an eighth. And an eighth. A quarter and an eighth. If they, you need to enlarge that for your doll's feet, then do so. I'm going to show you how. You just need to grab, uh, let's say this, this is your doll and it's, this pattern is too small for her. So I'm going to do this. Place that again the same way. But 
then, then again with this, just like any anything of this project, do a little mock-up first before you start. Yes, it's better to do that. I mean, once you get it down, you can do 100 pairs, easy. In this case, I'm going to proceed to cut this um, pattern out, and I'm going to add like um, a roughly an eighth of an inch. Why? Just in case, just in case if, if I need more or the fabric starts shredding uh, for whatever reason. And I'm just going to eyeball that. I'm not going to draw it, okay? So like we said, if your doll's feet are bigger, or, then- Or smaller. Or smaller, you need to add or minimize mm -hmm. at, at the uh, side, at the back of the uh, pattern. Um, I mean, I'm this going does, to, does come to a, a com, comes to a nice little point, a semi, you know, not totally pointy, but a little point. Okay. I added like a sixth of an inch there, just in case, okay? And here, I'm just gonna follow the line. Okay. Cabbage. Yes, it's in the cabbage pile. Okay. Having done this, I'm going to cut my tarlatan in half. I'm gonna use the ugly scissors. Okay. I'm going to place the lightweight silk on a bias as well, on each. Um, this tar on each. tarlatan, it matters the bias too. So you just now facing down the uh, right side of the um, peach silk. Okay, let me just pin this so that it doesn't move around. I'm going to place the peach silk facing down. The reason why I didn't want to cut the uh, tarlatan yet is because when I'm using it on the machine, it'll be easier to, you know, move it around sure. as I'm sewing. So that's a good, um, don't, don't cut it. It's like a tray, okay? Mm -hmm. You can cut it after the fact. And then you really don't have to worry about slippage either. You know, if it slips out of, it's not gonna go anywhere doing it this way. Now, one of the things is, although Lillian's feet are proportionately uh, correct for her height, she's got little, very fat, little chubby feet. Okay, so we're gonna sew them now. Add an eighth of an inch. And you can do 10 stitches per inch on this, okay? So you're gonna do it really at an eighth of an inch. Not working. Oh, it's, it's not plugged in. Oh. So you're doing about 10 per? Yeah. Okay. I got a little mess on the end, but that's not gonna show. It's nice with this technique, you can just run the stitches right off the 
Now this is a very nice little technique he's gonna show you right now. This would be very hard to put into words, so this is nice for them to be able to see it. Okay, pinning these ends, going to proceed with trimming. Okay, now I'm gonna clip the inside. This corners right here, we need to clip. Okay, that's what you have. Now, now, this is what's going to happen. Grab the uh, peach fabric, that's it all the way around. Using your fingers, press. See how nice that is. It's a nice finish over here. Now I know a lot of people when they make shoes, we see a lot of binding that they put on and this and that because they don't know this little trick of uh, how to make a very sleek shoe. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. So, so now we'll, we'll, we'll really press it out, or do you want to do you want to sew around or I'm not gonna, press it? I mean, it looks pretty good without even. Uh, yeah, the toilet tank helps you a lot with, um, you know, with, you can press it with your fingers. Now I'm going to pin, uh, pin the pitch fabric like so, leaving the uh, lightweight silk loose. Loose. Mm -hmm. I'm going to. And what is the reason for that? I'm going to encase the uh, back of the part of the shoe. Okay. Okay. Now do you sew? Um, okay. You bring this together. Gotcha. Okay. Excellent idea. That way you don't have a messy... Mm -hmm. I, I see where you're going. Yeah. Well. They need to pay us $20,000 for this. Technique. You need to pay me. Yeah. I'll give you, <laughs> I'll give you $3, Michael. <laughs> Okay. All okay. Right. There you go. All right. Now we get to make some shoe. Thread. It's the thread is a problem right now. It's a global. It's a glo There's a global shortage. Thank God we have a lot of old threads to work with. They're so old they can break very easily, but there's no choice. Well, once they're into a garment, they're just fine. It's the... An eighth of an inch again, okay? Small so, stitches, small temper stitches, inch. Temper inch, okay. Going to clip this just a little bit. That makes a lovely inner of the shoe. See, Gorgeous. it's in case. Gorgeous. So now what do we do with the tarlatan? Now I'm going to pin the whole oh, thing oh, together. That's right, because that's just that's just some over over pieces, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I left it on because it's easier for me to handle the um, 
the sewing on the machine. Okay. Yeah. So and this they idea. can do this by hand too if they wanted. Yes, they sure can. I don't know that, that when you go to put a foot in it that it's gonna hold together. I mean shoemakers have been using machines since they were invented. Actually yes. some of the most earliest machinery was ever made was for for shoemaking. And we don't want to fiddle around with this too much because we don't want to have the unraveling. So pretty much, once you get it to this point, it's a good idea to get it sewn up. I'm not going to use the machine on this. I'm just going to go, go ahead and uh, sew it. You're going to do it? Uh, By hand. Yeah, and now is this a um, basting stitch or, uh, or you're just? Uh, this is a basting stitch. Okay. Close to the edge as much as you can as far to the edge as you can. So just do a little basting running stitch. Um, but this is this is part of the construction. So are you doing you're doing little tiny stitches, huh? I'm doing letting uh, yes. All oh, right, so this yeah. is this is actually a running stitch. Well, we'll get this done and we will come back and show you the next step, which I'm waiting with great anticipation. So we're back and teach me your talent. What's the next step we're gonna do? Okay, from the... Oops, uh, let, me, let me get this camera under control, okay. From the back seam, I started uh, basting the shoe. I started right like about an inch from the uh, seam on the back. Okay, so I started there. I went okay. all the way around. All the way around. Mm -hmm. All the way around, and I stopped where I began. Okay. Don't cut the thread. Make, knot it out a couple of times. Okay. Now, and of course, again, I clipped all the uh, fuzzies here all around, okay, so I did that. Now I'm do, going, going to do basting stitches, like uh, I have, like we've always um, show you how to do gathers, right? So it's gonna be like so. So you're doing this, this is an overcast. This is an overcast. And you're doing it over the edge. Let me get in there close to show. And don't pass this, the first um, line. line. So okay. you're going to, under that line. Yes. Every stitch you, you do. Pull. Pull a little bit. Because we're trying to get curvature here now, right? Yes. And this is the heel side, so. Um, I'm learning in this with all of the rest of you, so. Again, from the. Uh, Seam on the back. You're going to you're going to stop about an inch. Okay. You can eyeball that. You can if eyeball you, that. Yeah. If you can't, but if you can't, just put a pin in. Exactly. Or or use a pencil and mark it. So you're pulling it. Very gently. Pull very gently. And then you have okay, a maybe a little more. Yeah, you have a beautiful curve there. Here, taping in the background that stayed and getting packages ready for all the. I'm gonna nut it out a couple of times. Okay. So we've got a nice curve there in the back. Can we see that sitting down on the table? Okay. So you've okay. done. Oh, you've done. I've done, done one already. Oh, you've done one already. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm gonna show you how to curve the uh, front of the shoe. Again, I'm gonna fold this in half. This is going to be my center. And I'm gonna come about an inch as well, okay? okay. I'm gonna start from there and do the same. Uh, 
I know for many of you this is very, very exciting, but for Annabelle it's a snooze fest. So here they go again. There. Okay, I have come to the center of the shoe. I'm gonna go ahead and pull. Okay, oh, see, yeah. serving it. Starting to curve. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna step at about an inch from the center of the shoe, the same. Okay. Okay. And once you come to that finish point, then you go ahead and pull the thread and curve. And knot it up. That's kind of what you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have another one already done, so let's look at them. Can we see them together? That's not the shape, ultimate shape, but um, well, there's still more more work to do on this to get it shaped in. Okay, we had our inner soles glued with the um, with the silk file and the um, so this is the inner. The inner, yes. I'm going to draw a center line from starting from the tip to the heel. Okay. Okay, so I draw a line. I'm going to cut that in half. And the thing is, gluing the two pieces of cardstock together gives it a, a, an extra strength that, you know, just using a, a strength but pliability, don't you agree? Yes, yeah, you need that. Yeah, and this is not, this is mostly dry, but it's still got a little, um, a little moist so that it, okay, can you okay. hold that up straight? Okay, it's got a nice gorgeous. finish, mm -hmm. instead of cutting the, uh, one piece at a time and then gluing it back on you make a mess and yeah here's all all three in one okay, okay so the silk the file inner. is gonna go facing inner the inner okay okay this is a little too big okay it's too big your shoes too big Yes, it's too big, but there is a solution to it. Don't um, don't worry. Um, what I need to do here, since it's too big, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple more stitches. And gather it a little more from here, from where I stopped. Remember, mm -hmm. I folded that an inch, and then from there to the uh, other um, inch. All right. Should you just do a couple more? gathers yes on, and you do it probably on both sides on both sides so it's even You ladies and gen gentlemen can do actually the whole thing around pulling it and curving it and making it fit this uh, shoe. Th the shoe sole mm -hmm. instead of what I'm doing. Um, yeah, they could just turn that out one. Well, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't agree with that because no. I think to get the to the get right the, shape to get yeah. the right shape, they kind of need to do that in sections. Okay, because how you curve the back and how you curve the front. And then and go in the and do the sides as the final fit. That makes sense. I mean, this is these are couture shoes, so it's no different. It has to be made to fit Lillian's feet. So, you know, by the way, people, that this these this pattern 
is made to fit her fit her feet. So you're gonna have to practice it before you go and make it on. Your doll could have a totally different foot. If you, if you had a, say a brew fashion with a wooden body, it'll have a long skinny foot with big toes. And so this, you have to, you have to work this. Okay. okay, done that. I'm gonna try again, see if this fits. That looks good. What do you think? Yes. Now we got it. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to craft my glue. And um, everybody has their own glue that they like to use. We use a um, woodworker's glue, glue that you can buy at the hardware store. It's very, very strong. Uh, but if you need to um, undo something, it can um, water. Well, it's water soluble. Okay, I drew this line for a purpose, okay? I'm going to place it along the uh, seam on the back of the shoe. Sometimes it's a good idea to let it sit for a second and before you go in on it. Okay. I'm gonna make sure I don't have any glue on my fingers because you don't wanna get that on the fabric either. And this is the this is the fiddly part where you don't really wanna Actually, it's best to do it like so. And the one thing with this with this glue, if you do get it on, you can wipe it off slightly, and it won't stain. But with this kind of fabric, you just have to be very careful. And just knead it into the space. And then once we get it all, it's looking great, but then the, it's, it's a good idea at this stage um, to, to take the iron to just the little edge of the fabric. Don't you agree, Jose? Take the what, I'm sorry? The iron to the edge of the fabric and, it, and the heat will pretty much make it glued down yes. really quickly. So that's looking really wonderful. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna press this down and it looks like you, you're you doing the technique that they, they have machines at um, sh uh, shoe making and shoe repair to do just what you did. Yeah, I'm so I I don't think doing need, it with my, I do it with we, your fingers, you yeah, know, press it need, nice. I don't think we need the iron. Look at that beautiful round shape. It looks gorgeous. So we will, we will get the other shoe repaired and we will be back. I'm gonna actually correct it a little bit. It's a little twisted. See how this line is coming uh, at an angle like so? It, that's because um, the seam on the back is not matching this line. So I'm going, before it dries, I'm going to correct that, okay? Okay, all right. So you're not perfect, huh? I guess not, <laughs> no. We'll be back. So here we're back and now we've got the next step to do and the shoes are looking gorgeous. I love them, I love the shape, I love the lining, I love the interior. So now we're going to teach you something that you probably may not know. A lot of people don't know this, but um, uh, Jose's home country is known for making phenomenal shoes. So it's part of their uh, culture 
and we've also had lots and lots of original shoes that have come through our doors for dolls that have been taken apart, uh, reused the soles, repaired. So here's something you probably don't know about shoemaking. You wanna tell it, wanna lay it on them? Yes, okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as we see, there is a gap here. Mm -hmm. And when you place the um, outer sole, it will create a dip. A dip. And by so, it, you'll have this mark around the shoe mm -hmm. sole, like right. a bulk, right? So. And on cheap shoes, you see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we're not doing cheap shoes. Are we doing cheap <laughs> shoes or expensive <laughs> shoes? We're doing expensive, okay. very, right. you know. Okay. Uh, usually what they do, what they use to fill up this cup, it's sand, okay? We don't have sand, even though the ocean is just yeah. three blocks well, away. Well, I mean, we're, we're, we're people doing this class may not have access to sand. So Michael had the best idea, like, let's just do it with salt. So go and pull out your salt out of the uh, pantry. And it doesn't matter if it's sea salt, if it's kosher salt. It just has to be It has salt. to be granulated, you know, right. not the actual sea salt because that's, you know, yeah. big grains and it'll yeah. make, yeah. it's not, not a good, um, good idea. And do not use sugar. So we want to uh, emphasize that sugar would probably do the same thing, but we don't, um, the salt's going to repel bugs. I have poured some salt on a, on a napkin, okay? And I'm just going to do this, pat the uh, bottom of the shoe like so. Okay. Until you create that. All right, that's okay. filled in. Filled you can't in. even see the, you can't really even see the, uh, um, the, the brown sole there. Okay, I, I did this, this one ahead of time and um, it's a little bit more dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and coat this bottom of the shoe with glue. Oh. And you probably, we're, we're rushing this, but you should probably really wait. You should wait until, like an hour. Yeah, until it's, it's, it's dry. I'm gonna do more glue. Oop. Oop, you just smack the shoe. And we're gonna put shoe, uh, glue on the bottom of the sole too, so that'll... I had already traced the outer shoe, uh, sole, shoe soles, but I'm not gonna cut them up uh, in this shape. Why? Because you don't need to do that either. The shoe got a little bigger, okay? So by, by placing, if you cut this around, that's gonna make a smaller shoe sole. Right. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Don't worry about the, those lines. I'm gonna cut cut that off. And you should probably let sit this around for half an hour or so. Okay. We're back and we've got the the, the salted soles done. And now before we cut, we got a little um ahead of ourselves but before we cut we really um we both jose and i decided that this is the next step before you cut is to do this which they're glued on but what are we going to do next okay what i did remember we did the salt on the on the gap at the bottom and then i pour glue on it and i spread it all over the bottom of the uh, uh, sole with my finger i used the uh, br uh, the brush the paintbrush but it, that didn't work so you need to use your finger and spread yeah, the glue gentle gentle play and then you place it on the um card card stock the card stock you're gonna let it sit i'm gonna use some cloth spins And these are easy to find if you don't have them. And, and we're going to let... There's also minis. You can get the minis. There are mini but, ones. But yes. these we've been using for, well, years and years and years because you can see one has got puppy chewing on it. That's probably yes. Berlin. On yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So so um, we uh, 
We're going to let these dry till they're, they're good and uh, solid on, and then we will be back. So we're back, and we did the salt on the shoes. And here's something that you will know that we are two, two and a half blocks from the beach. So there is moisture in the air. So when we put the salt on it, it created a little um, moisture around the uh, shoe. Um, it did dry up perfectly and did not leave any stain. And then we even tested it with a blow dryer. So it didn't, just it was just some moisture like you would get from steam or whatever. So now we're trimming the shoe and uh, uh, I've given Jose permission to, for this segment to use the good um, scissors for this because we want it to be very precise. Now, we another thing that we should tell you is that, you know, we're trying to do this quickly so that we can not have this be a 20 hour video. That looks really good. So we did have a couple of little spots of glue that got onto the um, silk. So how we remedied that is we wait, let it let it kind of dry, and then we took our little our little needle, and we just kind of gently went going with the grain of the fabric, just kind of picked at it. It didn't create any fuzz. Just kind of like little just little yep. bits. So, you know, ideally be careful and don't have that happen at all. But you know what? Sometimes when you get in a hurry, it makes, it makes little messes. It's really hard to deal with glue anyways to not have it. Um, so what are you doing now? You're just doing a little, you're done. I'm done. Usually, uh, if, if, if the salt does this, it, it needs more glue. glue. Okay, so being very careful not to make a, make a mess, I'm gonna grab a pin, and I'm just gonna go like so, okay? And I mean, obviously it would be ideal to have wooden, uh, wooden um, leather soles uh, sounds like somebody's delivering something to us. Can you grab that? Yes. Okay. Sorry for that interruption. This is a real living place where things go on. So we've got that all. We've got that. It's looking really, really nice. Okay. And the sole looks nice. And, uh, and the salt really works for the um, um, evening things out. It's a flat shoe. Um, and, you know, as soon as we can, we will put it on Lillian's feet so that um, it gets a shape. And since it's a pointed toe, there's a lot of empty space there. She has very little stubby little feet. So I want to have her to have a more of an elegant, you know, um, Audrey Hepburn style foot. So we've, we've, we've got that under control. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we will, um, do the decoration. So we're back, we've got the, um, sorry, that was a, a inquiry on a dollhouse. So they just, even though the doors are closed up, they just bang on the door till they get someone. That's collectors for you. So um, we're back, we've got the shoes looking good. Um, they're shaped, you can see they've gotten a little flared out at the, the top part of the shoe right in here. And that's just because Lillian Del Monte obviously is retaining water. She's got little thick ankles. But you know what, Maria- Too much salt. Yeah, Maria Callas had that issue too. So it's just life. So um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to work on the bows. So here's the thing. Jose created the shoe completely and I'm, of course, amazed um, how it turned, you know, that, that you could do this. Uh, but while he's been fiddling around, I have been working on the decoration because I got the fun and easy part. So I'm going to tell him how to do this. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 
a piece of, and, and this can be anything you want. It could be the ecru, it could be whatever you want. So we're gonna take a piece of, in our case of how we're decorating it, we're gonna take a piece of the coral silk and we are going to fold it. Now, now are you folding it the right, okay. Can see where I'm, all right, you got it. Okay, so we're gonna fold it raw edge to raw edge. And we're going to press those down? And we're going to press those down. So we're going to fold it raw edge to raw edge so that they touch. Let me just do that, and then we're going to do the other. And then once we get that on, we're going to just let the iron sit on it first, just a, a little bit, because we want that to be really, really nice and tight. Now we're going to we're going to steam it, mist it with our misty misty bottle. which someday we're gonna carry those when uh, when uh, Misty Notions gets back to us. And now we're gonna fold it over one more time, but we're gonna leave a little bit of a reveal, just a little more of a reveal than that, Jose. Yes, just a little uh, more. a little more? Okay. Yeah, just a little more. Because this is gonna be the, this is, yeah, that good? perfect. Because we're kind of trying to simulate the design work that was done on the bodice. So we're gonna do that. The iron keeps turning off, so. And then we'll just let it sit there for on it for a second, because we want this down really nice and tight. We can okay. move this a little, just a little. Just a little. And just let it sit. I think that's going to okay. be good because we're going to be doing stuff to it. So then once we get that in, we are going to put it through our buckle. Do they have to be the that. same? Yeah, they have to be the same. So I cut that and, but it's seven inches. So um, that looks shorter than seven inches. So let's see what the finished, what I figured that out. So we want to measure that. Because I will amend my. Uh, okay. Well, I I was cutting it at this same size over yeah, here. Yeah. So it's five so. inches, isn't it? Uh, uh, four and three quarters. Okay. So four and three quarters. So forget what I said earlier. It's one inch wide, but it's going to be four and three quarters. Sorry, I get sometimes I I get lose my place because. He's working, and I'm watching what he's doing instead of watching it through the camera lens. Okay. So we're going to weave it through this buckle, and we will have some buckles available in the boutique. So uh, the original prototype, we used no, antique better. ones. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay, so next step is we are going to take, we're going to take and take these ends mm -hmm. end to end and, and gather them together. And I've got a, a needle for you. Thread, oh, thread thank it already. you so much. You saved my life. You know, it's one of my minis, so you'll have to deal with it. Okay, but doing it the opposite direction though. Okay, like, there like you this? go. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna sew those two pieces together. Okay. Okay, and the next thing we're gonna take that little, and we're gonna, you got it. We're gonna 
sew that onto the center. So we're going to make a center. Okay, now we're going to take these ends here and we're going to gather them up into the center. Okay, now we're going to do it on the other side. Okay, I'm going to clip a little bit of this uh, excess right here. Knot it out. Knot it out, but don't don't take it away yet. Okay, now that's looking very nice. Now we have one more thing to do. So we're gonna take a little scrap of our lace, which is five inches. So we're going to take this out and we're gonna fold over a, the, each corner. You don't have to press it. You can just do it with your fingers. You're gonna fold over each corner. No, 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 just make a fold. Yeah, make a fold. All right, and at the header, which is the top, you're just going to gather it. Just gather it. Now there is, there is a thread in this that you can pull and just get the lace to gather, but I, I don't like to do that because it makes it too, too, um, I like to have more control with a needle and thread. Because, you know, as Jose says, I am quality controlling. <laughs> So we're going to make a little lace cushion for our bow bows to sit on. And then we just have gathering a little fold there because we don't want a little raw edge showing. And then we just pull it tight together. And then we knot it off, but don't don't clip it, because we can take advantage of that. Um, <laughs> all right, so then we just kind of just fluff it out so it looks really nice. And then that's going to be the back cushion of the bow. So we're going to put that behind it. Sure. It'll give us some nice contrast so we don't have the, the bows sitting on the shoe without any um,
I've got another one for you to put on the other side. Already done. But you know what? I kind of like that like that. With what only one? I think, yeah, I think one is good. I think, I think I like that with only one. See, you can change your mind as you're doing it. I visualized it on both sides, but I actually kind of like it on the just coming out the top. So let's decide. So let's look and see how it looks on the shoe itself. So let's pick a shoe and see, do we want to do that or do we want to, but I think it should go the opposite way with the, the, the lace. That's it. So that's, that's what I want. So we're going to go ahead and sew those on and we'll show you the fitted product. And the last thing we're going to do is our last little bit of um, fiddling with finger pressing the final products. So we are at the end game of this. So normally in our daily life here, this last little step I would be doing, but since I can't be uh, working with the camera and do it at the same time, Jose is going to do this. So this is what we would call finger pressing. So we're going to go and do all the things. If you see that, like for instance, this is a smaller size and it's happening on the bigger size too. Um, the, we want the lace to be fluffy. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to fluff it out with our fingers and we're going to see how much prettier that is. And then we're going to, once we get everything the way we want it on the sleeves too, we are then going to lightly mist it with our misting bottle. And you don't want to use an iron on it at this point because you'll take out all the pleats that you've put in. And then we're going to straighten out all of the uh, box pleats so that everything looks good and we want everything laying in the right direction. And so you just ha you have to do this by hand. You can't, there's no other way to do it. And we'll just do that on all over. And now this might be a time if we decide that the bows on the side are too exuberant, we might want to tack them down. Um, but I think if we just finger press them and miss them, it'll all work. And of course, Annabelle's in here. See that just, just that little bit just makes it lay better. We'll do that over there too. Just to get it up, get it in nice little and if you're if you're working with your dolls in your your case uh, putting them in the case getting them ready you should be doing this too just doing that don't just shove them in make sure everything is laying properly the back looks really good so once we get her just the way we want then we're gonna mist her and then she'll dry and she'll look fantastic. And this is a very, these are really, really wonderful tools to have because it doesn't squirt out water all over and cause dribbles. It's just very, very light. It's not gonna hurt the fabric in any way. David went to the, the market across the street and got us some ice cream because we've been very good little boys working hard. And you've got the bows in the back looking gorgeous. Let me come over there to, 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 uh, to have that peek on that. And this is the smaller version. So again, you can see that it's looking very nice. The, 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 these bows are a little bit um, they're a little, you know, sticking out, but it, you know, they, they've been rolled up for almost 70 years, so the fabric's going to have to get used to that. So that's looking really, really good. And the ruffles, I think, are all looking nice. So while I'm over here, why don't we do the back of um, Lillian's costume, too, getting it. 
So it's looking good. Now she's got all her weights in, and that's really making the gown look fabulous. We haven't put the weights in the, uh, in all honesty, in the smaller version, because we wanted to get this so that you all have this video. So that's looking good. We want a little bit of that showing because that's a wonderful contrast. And those bows look gorgeous. I will tell you that one of the most difficult parts of this whole, whole class are, is, is really lacing up the backs. So you really make sure when you, you make your um, loops or your holes for the lacing, make sure they're big enough to accommodate the, um, it worked, but I, I wrestled with it. But that's why it fits so beautifully. So then we'll, we'll look at the front. And see, so we've got a little bit of our ruffles there because we've been handling so much, are flo flowing in all different directions. So we've got to get it going in one direction. Again, the bows just need to be... We're just using regular tap water. We have decent water here, but if you've, if you've got bad water, um, you might want to use... Um, uh, you might want to use soft or um, bottled water or soft water. So this is what we do. You know, we use irons, we do all those things. We also get in and just use our hands and do the, it's called finger pressing. And this is a good technique too if you're working with really delicate old fabric. Um, see how, look, how nice that looks. Um, it's a way to do it without taking iron to something. I also use this technique when I'm working with uh, modern dolls like that have rayon and um, nylon and you don't really want to press them out. This works great for that too. Yeah, see she's gotten her 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 This is not something that is usually in Jose's job description because this is what this is what goes over to me and then I do all this. But he can do anything, so. And when I'm done with it, I bring it to show them. And if they don't say it looks fabulous, they're in trouble, right? Yep. In a very <laughs> big trouble. <laughs> extra malfunctioning uh, bow, so we used that. We don't waste anything. I thought that would make a great hair ornament for, for Lillian. And it looks to me that all we have to do is fluff up the lace a little bit around the neck, and we're done. So I'll let you do that. And there's the, the forgive, Forget Me Not Blue, the first uh, prototype that we did, and then the, this is the second. And then this is the first of the, uh, the, the little one. This is a really great technique for this kind of very fluffy uh, lace that how we um, sewing two pieces together. So uh, I, I expect to see this on other, other costumes that people are doing. And Lillian picked up a little brooch because she thought, well, 
that Deliac has a Georgian diamonds. I need to get out my Georgian diamonds. So Jose's just fluffing it around with... Um, with a big needle. Big needle, not, not the pointed end, but... We just have to do a little on this side and then it, I think it's ready. I think we're good. Okay. I think we're good. Well, I bet you're glad this is over. <laughs> Me? <laughs> we'll get back to regular programming. Anyways, it was a lot of fun working with all of you, and um, I hope you enjoy your projects. And we will see you again next time. You want to say goodbye to everybody, Jose? Yeah, goodbye, and thank you. That was fun. Looking forward to another uh, exotic design. Okay. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye, friends. <laughs>